This video is not about how to master the skills needed to become a data analyst. It's about how you can do and learn the bare minimum to quickly land the role. To get a data analyst job fast, you need to make sure you stand out amongst the millions of people who want to break into the industry. I've completed a plethora of online courses and certifications, spent years honing my technical skills, and over half a decade working with complex big data. And today, I will utilize all of my knowledge and experience to give you the fastest way you could land a data analyst job like this, or this, or this. If you follow closely, you'll know exactly what steps to take to get hired fast, starting with step number one, which is to collect the necessary credentials to prove to recruiters and companies that you're qualified to do the job. A uni degree in a relevant subject like computer science, data science, data analytics, math, statistics, or anything along those lines would be good. I have a master's degree in finance and economics, for example, and whilst this is not directly related to data analytics, many of the advanced math, statistics, optimization, and econometrics courses I took are transferable and applicable in the world of data analysis. But don't worry if you didn't study a computer, data, or math-related subject, as there are so many certifications out there that you can get. I'd strongly suggest you take the very well-known ones like the Google or the IBM certificates, as people will certainly recognize them, or at least have heard about them. Say you went to Harvard, Oxford, or Cambridge. You wouldn't have to explain to others which university you attended, right? There is no point completing certificates that nobody knows about. Now, whilst these courses claim that they'll get you job ready, you'll want to do more than just completing them. Trust me. You can also see that the Google Data Analytics Certificate is actually so popular that you have a huge competition. So you might want to take it to the next level and get the Google Advanced Data Analytics Professional Certificate. Completing any combination of these courses will give you a good basic knowledge of working with data as you'll learn to clean, transform, and analyze data, find insights and visualize them, and communicate those insights to others. If you choose the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate, you'll learn key analytical skills from data cleaning to data analysis and visualization, and how to use platforms and tools like spreadsheets, SQL, Tableau, and R programming. You do not need previous experience to start this program. It is 100% online and you can take it at your own pace. If you want to take it a step further with the Google Advanced Data Analytics Professional Certificate, you'll learn to build strong foundations in data science as the course is heavily focused on building regression and machine learning models to analyze and interpret data. With both of these courses, you get to learn in-demand data analyst skills and earn yourself an employer-recognized Google certificate in less than six months if you invest 10 hours per week. Once you've completed the certifications, you can add them to your CV and LinkedIn. If you're interested, sign up to start a free seven-day trial of the Google Data Analytics and Advanced Data Analytics professional certificates using the links in the description below. If you decide to complete the IBM Data Analyst Certificate, You'll be proficient in Microsoft Excel, SQL, and Python with a specific focus on data wrangling, data analysis, and data visualization. Moving on to step number two, which is to build your data analyst skills arsenal whilst you're getting your certificates. And again, let me just emphasize here that you don't need to be an expert at any of these tools. You will simply just have to learn enough to do the job initially. Once you actually have a job, you can always learn on the go as the ability to learn fast and adjust to changing working conditions will be crucial throughout your entire career. The core data analyst technical skills you want to focus on would be spreadsheets in general, SQL, a data visualization tool, and a programming language. When it comes to SQL, focus on the data analysis part of querying and less on the database creation, maintenance, and management bit, as it's highly likely that you'll be doing detailed analysis as an entry-level data analyst, as opposed to building the underlying schemas. As for the visualization tool, the Google Data Analytics Certificate will teach you how to use Tableau, but that's not to say that you cannot learn something else like Power BI, for example, which is also very popular. As long as you know one, you should be fine. Now, for the programming language, 
My preference is certainly Python over R, but that's not to say learning R is useless. The biggest difference between the two is that Python is a general programming language, while R is a statistical programming language. Whichever one you decide to learn, make sure you narrow down your focus to data analysis, as learning everything in a programming language will take you ages. So, for example, when it comes to Python, just focus on the pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn libraries for data analysis, and scikit-learn if you want to do some machine learning. Once you have the necessary credentials and skills, you need to showcase that you can genuinely apply what you learned. So step number three would be to build a strong data analyst portfolio. I know that there are so many places to find projects nowadays, so let me simplify it for you by showing you one paid and two completely free platforms to find your next project. So, first of all, the paid one. Just go to Coursera, search for guided projects, choose data science, less than two hours, and English from the filters, and you have well over 100 guided projects to choose from. Or, if you're looking for something that's completely free, just go to Kaggle and search something you're interested in under the datasets section. If you don't have any ideas on what you want to do, just click on all datasets and sort by most votes. Or just search HR Analytics Customer Churn or Google Play Store. You can use the data card to learn more about the dataset you're working with, and you can use the code section to see what other people have already done using this specific dataset. Make sure to sort by votes, as it's usually the case that the best or most useful solution gets upvoted by people. Check out the discussion page if you have a question about the dataset, as it's likely that others have already asked and answered this question of yours. The second free option would be to recreate any of the portfolio project videos on my channel. I made videos on creating Excel and Tableau dashboards, or gathering, wrangling, analyzing, and visualizing data in Python. You can also find detailed content on big data analytics using PySpark, manipulating SQL databases using Python only, or a case study like this on customer churn analysis. You can and you should copy these projects, but you should also try and take them a step further by adding some extra analysis or visualizations to really put your own twist on your own data portfolio. Create your unique, meaningful insights to help you stand out from the crowd. Once your portfolio is ready, use platforms like Medium to publish articles about your projects and GitHub to provide all of the underlying data, workings, and code. Now that you are credible, have strong technical skills, and an awesome portfolio, the next step is to summarize and highlight your unique experiences and skills by writing a great resume. I actually have already made a dedicated video on writing the data analyst resume that got me many job interviews. I'll put the link in the description below check it out. But to quickly summarize, as a rule of thumb, the more relevant the experience, the project, the uni degree, the higher up it should be on your resume. Say for example, you have some experience in industries and roles completely non-related to data, but you've completed many projects, have a strong portfolio, and also have some relevant certifications. Make sure you put your projects and your certificates at the top of your resume rather than your non-relevant experience. Include keywords that recruiters might look for, keywords like Excel, Python, SQL, or Tableau, and make sure you focus on highlighting how you solved specific problems using these tools. Don't just state what you did. Explain why you did what you did, how you came up with the solution, and what the benefit was of you solving this problem. I think of the resume round as the quick elimination round in the job application process, as you'll never get hired straight after, but you can easily get rejected straight away. Your goal is to show recruiters that you have enough credibility, qualifications, and skills to get that crucial interview where you can then shine. Moving on to step number five, which is to optimize your LinkedIn profile as the platform is probably the best place to find jobs and let jobs find you. This is me before optimizing my profile. Boring. And this is me after. If you just spend an hour or two tweaking your profile, you can significantly increase the likelihood of recruiters reaching out to you. So, how should you optimize your profile? Well, it's no secret that recruiters who look to fill data analyst positions will certainly look for keywords like data analyst. So first and foremost, you should try and include data analyst somewhere in your profile. The best place to put these keywords would be in the headline. Make sure to write your own headline as you can include as many keywords as you want to as if you go with the default LinkedIn option you're restricted to just 
one title. And even if your role is not a data analyst role, you can include data analysts somewhere in the headline as long as you have some necessary skills and or certifications to back it up. Next, you should optimize your bio. You can put your contact detail right at the top so that people can easily reach out to you without having to look for your email. Recruiters looking to fill data analyst jobs are looking for certain skills. So make sure you include keywords like Excel, SQL, Python, or Tableau, or whatever technical skills you have here. You should also add a short description of what you can do with these specific tools. When populating the work experience section, focus on highlighting relevant experience. Keep in mind that you're applying for a data analyst job here, so it's better to include less here as long as it's relevant rather than more non-relevant experience just to fill the page. Include any data-related tasks you do or did in your current or previous roles along with bigger projects that you completed. Use the licenses and certification section to include any relevant certificates you've acquired like the Google Advanced Data Analytics, Data Analytics, or IBM Data Analyst certificates. Next up, one of my favorite sections, the featured section. Use this space to showcase more of your skills and who you are. You can include a link to your GitHub page, your portfolio project page, or maybe even your own website where you host all of your projects. Choose an eye-catching image that stands out and make your profile viewers want to click on your content. And last but not least, include a well-lit, smiley profile picture with a clean background. Okay, so now that you've completed all of these steps, there's just one thing to do, and that's actually applying for the jobs you want. Make sure you apply to as many jobs as possible and do not let rejections get to you. I've applied to hundreds of jobs throughout my career, and I certainly didn't get most of them. I got rejected after I submitted my resume, I failed online aptitude tests, I didn't get past interview rounds, I was not the chosen candidate after assessment center days. But with all of these rejections and failures, in the end, I always managed to get a competitive, high paying role that I enjoy doing because I learned from each rejection and failure and worked on my skills and knowledge to go into the next job application as a stronger candidate. So let me just say this one more time. Apply to as many roles as possible and do not take rejections personally. Your goal is not to get all of the jobs you apply to. Your goal is to get a job that'll allow you to break into the industry. I hope you found these tips useful. And if you did, you should check out some of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.